afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another SRT webinar. My name is Crona Kane, and today I'll be introducing you to three Irish universities who will be telling us all about studying in Ireland. As you can see, we have chat to the right of your screen. So please, everyone, say hi and let us know where you're from. And if you have any questions, if you write them here and we'll answer them after the presentation. So before we play the introduction video, I'd like to introduce you to our presenters. So we have David from Dundalk Institute, from the Institute of Technology, Carlo, and Ashley from Limit Institute of Technology. Hi, all. Hey, good afternoon. How are you doing? Hi, everyone. Hello. Choose Ireland. Every year, thousands of international students choose Ireland as the location in which to further their education. It's not hard to understand why. In Ireland, education is a pleasure. Living and studying in Ireland is an enjoyable, unforgettable experience. Ireland is a safe and friendly country. We are the warmest, friendliest people in the world. Ireland is an educated, English-speaking country in Europe, with close cultural, economic and educational ties to the English-speaking world, including the UK, our nearest neighbour, and the USA. Which is why so many leading global companies have chosen Ireland as the best location for their European headquarters. Ireland offers a wide educational curriculum from which to choose. From creative technologies to centres of scientific and technological excellence, to renowned humanities faculties. Qualifications gained in Ireland have the highest international recognition. Ireland produces highly employable graduates, many of whom are global leaders, heads of some of the world's largest corporations. Once here, international students experience a learning environment that is distinctly supportive, where individual access to academic leaders and tutors is commonplace where experienced advisors help international students by easing their path of integration into Irish educational and social life and where that famous Irish hospitality makes you feel right at home. That's why Ireland is the education destination of choice for so many international students. Ireland's creative and innovative culture makes Ireland an inspiring place to study a rich resource for the most inquisitive and curious scholars. In Ireland, we cater for the most discerning international students, with high standards of quality student accommodation both on and off campus, great student sports and social facilities, and everywhere there's that warm, easy Irish way of life. The physical landscape of Ireland is breathtaking. The countryside and the coast, so beautiful, it pulls you outdoors. It forms a lush green hinterland for international students to explore, to enjoy or simply to observe. Excellent intercity connections by road, rail and air make it easy and pleasant to explore the entire country. From the relaxation of walking to the thrill of surfing on the crest of the highest waves, it's all here. Ireland. Education is in our DNA. The diversity of educational choices, vast. The culture, unique. And the opportunities, immense. Education in Ireland. The choice is yours. First presentation, I'm going to hand you over to David from the Dundalk Institute of Technology. It's all yours, David. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Dundalk in our. It's not just that DKIT is the leading higher education institute in North Leinster, South Ulster. It's not just because we have more than 45 undergraduate courses and over 60 part time options. Yes, our four academic schools offer diverse programs of study taught by inspirational lecturers in state-of-the-art facilities. And yes, we have strong links with local businesses. Our programs offer hands-on learning, 
with connections to industry experts and have a focus on entrepreneurship and innovation. But it's not just that. And it's not just because of our wide range of sports and social clubs or the excellent employment opportunities for DKIT graduates. DKIT is just down the road. It's allowing you to be more independent. I meet new people every day, making new friends every day. And I just love it. What makes DKIT so extraordinary is you. You make it DKIT. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us here for our webinar today. I'm coming from Dundalk in Ireland. So I'm going to take you through a short presentation here at the moment. And after the presentation, we'll have a chance for questions and answers at the end. So just progress into a little bit more information. I'll come and look at the presentation in a bit more detail. So as you've probably seen in, in the video there before, Ireland is ranked in the top 10 education systems in the world. We have a population of 4.8 million in Ireland. And at the moment, we actually have the youngest population in Europe in terms of our age group. Uh, for, and that works well for students coming to study <clears throat> within Ireland. Most recently, the national minimum wage in Ireland is 10 euros and 10 cents per hour. And that's the third highest within Europe. So if you're coming to study in Ireland, you can work up to 20 hours per week and you have the possibility of earning 800 euros per month whilst you're studying and that whilst you're on the holidays so it's christmas holidays easter holidays and if you want to stay in ireland in the summer you can work up to 40 hours per week and be earning almost 2,000 euros per month within ireland as i say we are as we are a multinational hub uh, some of the world's global uh, global firms are based in ireland the corridor between Belfast and Dublin is called the M1 corridor. It's the financial technology corridor, and it's a gateway to not only Europe, but the gateway to the Americas, with some of the large global technology companies, software companies, uh, multinational pharmaceutical companies, medical technology companies, and financial service companies based within a 100-mile stretch between Belfast and Dublin, of which Dundalk are located right in the middle between the, those two capital cities. Some of the companies, uh, as you see before, uh, seen before in the videos, you got Citibank, you got Amazon, you got PayPal, you got LinkedIn, you got Google. <clears throat> the PayPal premises are just across the road from DKIT. So PayPal will be taking a lot of our graduates. We also have uh, biopharmaceutical companies who are developing clothing and PPE equipment for combating the coronavirus, and they are based right across the road from DKIT as well. And they'll also be one of the leading global firms working on the finding the cure for coronavirus as well. Employment opportunities for DKIT students. We have you know, lots of opportunities, not only for our own graduates, but within Ireland as a whole in the fields of ICT, engineering, financial services, media design, health and international sales. Indeed, in the area of engineering, we at DKIT are offering additional scholarships for students of up to two to three thousand euros off your fees if you're coming for building and construction engineering programs. But we can uh, discuss that later on in the presentation. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, DKIT or Dundalk Institute of Technology, we're located halfway between Dublin and Belfast. Uh, we're located about 45 minutes north of Dublin Airport. So when you arrive into Dublin, we our pastoral team will make sure you are collected from the airport and brought to campus for free of charge. So we provide that service to support our inbound international students. So whether you're coming from Europe, the Americas, North America or South America, uh, or Asia, we will support you to be picked up from the airport and brought to your accommodation on campus. In terms of Dundalk itself, Dundalk is the second largest town in Ireland, as I mentioned before, with easy access to key capital cities within Ireland in terms of uh, Dublin, the capital city of Ireland, and in Northern Ireland, the capital city, which is Belfast. Belfast has two airports, Dublin has one airport, all within one hour's drive of campus. So you can travel with two DKIT, but if you want to travel uh, to Europe as part of your uh, studies, then we can support you uh, by providing you with travel uh, access as well. DKIT is one of the important things to remember is whilst we're not in the capital cities, the cost of living is actually a lot cheaper. So in comparison at present to Dublin, DKIT is actually 54% cheaper to live than if you were living in Dublin. 
So in terms of an aerial view of our campus, as you see there, right next to number 14, the key landmark within our own campus is the wind turbine. We were actually the first wind turbine on any higher education campus within in the world. Uh, so we have it in 13 years. And if you're an engineering student or interested in engineering, it generates around 40 to 50 percent of our power and energy on campus. Around, if you just look at number two there at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, about two minutes walk from there we have an accommodation block and another accommodation block is number 14. The accommodation block beside number two is where we will house most of our international students. Now if you are coming from a country uh, that is in Latin America. So I see the students on here from Honduras and Ecuador. Uh, so any Latin American students and for some students, including countries such as uh, Tajikistan as well, we offer free accommodation scholarships for a lot of students. We don't offer for European students or students from the USA or Canada. But if you are thinking coming at DKIT, we will offer you free accommodation scholarship from certain countries and that's for the duration of your studies here at DKIT. In terms of our programs, we have just over 50 undergraduate degree programs, and we've got around 15 postgraduate programs. Some of the, the programs within our four main schools, which are business and humanities, engineering, creative arts, and health and science. Business, accounting, finance, the hospitality, culinary programs within engineering. We've got all the key engineering programs, such as civil, mechanical, electrical, construction, and within creative arts, or is the, the art in itself has a lot of employment opportunities in the areas of computing, creative media, and we also have strong music programs as well. We provide uh, pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical science programs. We don't provide nursing and midwifery programs for international students, and that's not DKIT that say that, but it's the Irish government. And we have students from around 35 different countries across the world. In terms of studying at DKIT, as I mentioned before, we are a great location. We have a very focused careers office. We have small class sizes. And as a result of the coronavirus, when we do start back, we'll be offering a mix of blended learning. So some classes will be online and some classes will be taken um, within the actual labs or lecture rooms as well. And all of our classes will be starting the week of the 28th of September this year. So we're just starting two weeks later than normal. In terms of one of the key areas of students coming to study at DKIT or any higher education institute is one, to find the right course and then two, to find the right job. And 95% of our students will go on to do a postgraduate course or find employment within the first nine months of graduating. As I mentioned before, because there's so many key employers, Within about 40 minutes drive or 40, uh, 40 mile radius of DKIT, there is lots of employment opportunities. In terms of services on campus, we have our own theatre, we have a bank, library, we've got all our sporting clubs and societies. So, whatever sporting club and society you're interested in, we can support you to join that. In terms of also tuition fees, for European students, our fees are 3,000 euros per year. Now, if you do get in touch with me, I'll also be sending information about how you can actually get those fees paid for if you're from a certain uh, income household, uh, household income uh, below a certain threshold within Europe, you can actually get a grant to cover your fees. And for e European students, our master's programs are up to 5,000 euros. For international students, our fees would be 9,950 euros. So for non-EU students, our fees will be at that rate. And our halls of residence, as I mentioned before, they're based on campus. Uh, nothing was, is uh, needed to get in terms of a train or a bus. All of our accommodation is within walking distance to the campus. And finally, our last slide here shows DKIT Sports, where we have one of the best uh, gyms within the region with a swimming pool, sports centre, uh, lots of uh, sporting indoor fields and playing fields. And when you become a student at DKIT, you'll pay €150 Euro levy per year, and that is full membership of the gym and membership of all of your sporting clubs and societies. So that in terms of looking after your mental health and well-being, whilst you're studying at DKIT, this will be uh, a great uh, asset for you to have as a student that's paid for in advance of each year. So that's the end of my presentation. My, my details are here. 
And again, I'll be happy to take your questions at the end of the presentation, and I'll certainly follow up with each and every one of you at the end of the presentation. So I'm going to pass you over to Rachel now from IT. Thanks for listening to my presentation today. There are students from... Hi there, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, that was a, just a very brief video um, featuring some of our international student ambassadors. Um, and that was filmed during the International Day, um, which IT Carlo celebrate every year. So I'll come to that again a little bit um, later. But for now, I'm going to take you uh, through my presentation. So Carlo, uh, well, as uh, my colleague um, mentioned, um, Ireland has the youngest population in the EU right now with 33.3% of the population under 25 years. Um, this is a picture of Carlow Town. You can see that it is a small place. Um, Ireland doesn't have many large cities, um, but Carlow is a town of about 30,000 people. Um, and the Institute is also not a very large Institute. We have about 8,000 students. Um, half of those are studying on undergrad and master's programs full time and about the other half then are in the faculty of lifelong learning. So they're people who are working and studying at the same time. Um, you'll be able to see in the little picture um, the map of Ireland. You can see where Carlow is located in relation to Dublin. So we are one hour south of Dublin. Um, and Carlo and Dublin are very well connected by public transport. You can travel to Dublin by train or by bus, and it takes less than one hour. Um, so as my colleague from DKIT mentioned, the cost of living in Dublin is now um, the, one of the most expensive places to live in Europe. However, Ireland's smaller towns offer a much more reasonable option in terms of cost of living. Um, so um, you have the you're close enough to the capital city that you can go there for entertainment or uh, tourist reasons, um, but you're far enough away that you're not paying the steep or high prices for accommodation that is very much normal in Dublin these days. So IT Carlo has three main faculties. Um, IT Carlo is an institute where the focus is mainly on um, engineering, science, IT. We also have a strong focus on sports, um, not just as part of our clubs and societies, but also as part of our academic offering. So you can study sports and exercise science. You can study sports management and coaching. You can also study strength and conditioning or sports rehabilitation and athletic therapy, which is like being a physiotherapist. Um, within engineering, um, you can do civil engineering, electrical or electronic, aerospace engineering, and also mechanical. Um, so within the Faculty of Science, we then also have our IT programs. Uh, we like to have very specifically targeted programs. So rather than getting a degree in computer science, um, at IT Carlo you can choose to specialize in computer game development, 
cybercrime and IT security, IT management, creative computing, digital art and design. There's a wide range of options. So they're not all here on the slide, but please do contact me if you'd like to know, uh, or also have a look at our brochure, which is available to download here. Um, you'll be able to see the full course offering. Uh, we have a faculty of business and humanities too. Um, you can study product design, you can study PR and media, and you can study a wide range of business related subjects. Um, so here's just a couple of testimonials from students who have been at IT Carlo. Kirsten from Iowa was studying on sports rehabilitation and athletic therapy. So we have a very strong partnership with a number of US institutes uh, where students begin their studies at home in the US and then come here to Ireland in year three or year four to complete their program. Um, these types of pathways mean that we have a very nice international mix of students, not just international students coming in in year one for their whole program, but also international students arriving into year two, three, four, and also for masters. Um, so, you know, you don't have to be a high school graduate to get a place at IT Carlo. You can have already begun your studies in your home country and you can decide to transfer the credits that you have already gathered um, and complete your studies with us. On the other side, we'll see Shane, that's an Irish student who was studying product design. And what both of these students mention is, you know, the small campus means that there is a small student population, so you get to know people very well. Um, in the video, you will also have heard one of our ambassadors mentioning that you get to develop a very close relationship with your lecturers. Um, so, you know, these are some of the great advantages of being an IT Carlos student. Here we can have a little look into the science labs. Um, at the moment, IT Carlo are building a brand new science and technology block. Um, but given the high practical content of all of our courses, um, students spend around 40% of their time doing hands-on work um, in contrast to sitting in a lecture theater listening to a lecture. Um, and so this student here, Fiona, who studied biosciences, um, she says that the lab facilities are great and that students have great access to equipment. Another thing that is different between an institute of technology and a university is that as a student in an IOT or an institute of technology, uh, you have two teams of staff who work with you. So one, you have your lecturers who deliver theory. Um, and then when you're busy in the labs doing practice or doing project work, you also have a full team of technicians whose job it is to make sure that everything that you're doing in the lab is safe and is um, also on point for what your task is. Um, so it's good to think that, you know, you don't just have one team working with you, but two. So IT Carlo is a very well equipped campus. We have a fully kitted out hangar, as you can see here for aerospace engineering. Um, we also have a fully kitted out sound and visual recording studio for our um, Bachelor of Engineering in TV and Media Production. Um, for digital marketing, there are Mac Labs. For visual communications and design, you'll also find Mac Labs. So very well equipped and kitted out campus, um, providing the facilities that students need to meet the high practical content of their program. Here you'll get a little glimpse into our library. It's spread over three floors, very much the center of our campus. And um, there are spaces in the library for group and individual work. Um, we think it's very important that students are doing group work from the beginning of their studies, um, purely based on the fact that when you go to work in Ireland, if you choose to stay and build your career here, and I'll mention here that Ireland is the number one place in Europe for opportunities to build life and career after studies. Um, so as my colleague David mentioned from DKIT, Ireland has some of the world's top multinational companies located here. Um, and if you plan to stay after your studies and hope to get a job with them, you can be guaranteed that you will be working not only as part of a team, but as part of a team that is very multicultural. Ireland also has the highest number of international workers in the EU. Um, so if you go to work here, you need to be ready and able to work on a multicultural team. So from, right from the beginning at IT Carlo, that's exactly what your experience will be you'll be completing group tasks along with um, other international students and Irish students. Um, I'm gonna skip through that slide. So IT Carlo has a second campus. 
the main campus is in Carlo Town, which we said was located one hour from Dublin. The Wexford campus is located right on the coast of Ireland on the southeast corner. It's a small seaside town and it's home to IT Carlo's School of Art and Design. You can also study sustainable farm management there. You can study business um, and a couple of other programs. There is not the same selection of programs as we have on the Carlo campus, um, but particularly if you're interested in art and design, this is the place for you. And the good news is that all programs here are currently running at a 20% discount. So you can study on the Wexford campus for only 8,200 euros per year. Um, it's fair to say, I think, that the Irish as a nation are pretty obsessed with sports. Um, we really love sports in this country and all of the universities and the IOTs would have a huge amount of sporting opportunities for students. I mentioned that the, earlier on in my presentation the sports programs that you can um, apply for and study on. Um, but also, if you don't want to study sport, but you are very keen on sports, um, you will have plenty of opportunity to get on a team and to compete uh, on a national level um, in intervarsity competitions. Um, IT Carlo have national titles in rugby, in soccer for girls and guys, rugby for girls and guys, uh, basketball for girls and guys. So there's, um, there's all kinds of sports going on and we have just built our South Sports Campus, which was a 15 million euro investment we have six outdoor pitches and a full Olympic running track. So it's located just one kilometer from our main campus. And this is a picture from the Hill Walking Society. Our, uh, IT Carlo has over 35 clubs and societies. They are run by students for students. Um, and this particular one here, the Hill Walking Society is very popular with international students. Um, five or six times during the academic year, the students are put on a bus and taken to a beautiful place where they can go walking or hiking. Um, so this is a society, as I say, which is very popular with international students. I'm sure in your country, just like in Ireland, some of the most beautiful places to explore are difficult to access on public transport. So this particular society is something that the international students enjoy very much. So here we are again, this is the International Day. Um, so you saw the video that was um, at the very beginning of the presentation that was shot on this day. We celebrate each year in November and students from each country set up a table and they talk to domestic students about their home country. Sometimes they give a taste of maybe some of their local food. Um, you can see them in their national dress and perhaps they may even do a performance at the end as well. So it's a great day, thoroughly enjoyed by all. So we mentioned already about Ireland being the number one place in Ireland to stay and build career um, after studies. Um, so this is just a little slide. It's got some of the big companies that are present here in Ireland on it. Just gives you an idea of who you might go to work for when you're finished. This is one of our graduates. Uh, he studied aerospace engineering and is now working at the European Space Agency. Um, so. IT Carlo, a lot of the lecturers there are very closely connected with industry. Um, they may still be active in industry, um, and so they can um, help you to create connections uh, within the industry that you're moving into when you graduate. Um, this is one of the international student ambassadors for this year. Um, this is Olga, she's from Russia, um, and she's a student of science. Um, so, we are very happy to be able to offer um, year one places to students from Russia and CIS countries who have only fours and fives on their attestat. Um, so please do contact me for further information on this um, and I'll be able to let you know. One other thing that I will say about Olga is she was a recipient of the High Level of English Scholarship. Um, you can get a fee discount for IT Carlo if your English reaches uh, a certain level. So just contact me for more information about that. Um, so this is just a little bit of information on the entry requirements. Um, so this is kind of specifically for students coming out of um, Russia and the CIS. So if you have threes on your report, you need to do the foundation program. If you don't have any threes, we can, uh, we can admit you directly to year one. Uh, if this doesn't correspond with your high school completion, just contact me and I'll give you the information which is relevant to you specifically. 
So these are the fees. Um, the foundation program is there and then the undergrad. Uh, if you get the high level of English scholarship, you'll be seeing a discount on that undergrad fee. Um, looking below the living costs, we mentioned that they were much lower than Dublin. So these are the living costs for uh, Carlo, uh, 100 to 130 per week. There is a variety of accommodation options available. IT Carlo do not have their own student accommodation. I like to say that Carlo Town is like an extension of the campus. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a small town. The campus is on the edge. It takes 15 minutes maximum from one side of the town to the other. So students live with families. They live in rented accommodation. They live in specialized student accommodation. There's a wide range of accommodation options. Um, and we can, of course, help and assist you in finding something which is suitable for you. Um, you'll see there's a zero next to transport. As I mentioned, it takes about 15 minutes to walk across Carlo Town. Uh, there is no public transport here. Many students buy themselves a bicycle, um, but most people, including myself, walk from home to campus on a daily basis. Okay, please, if you're active on social media, follow us on Facebook um, and on Instagram. Um, I use these pages just to uh, keep students who are studying with us already up to speed on what's happening around the town, what's happening around the campus. So it's a nice opportunity for you to have a little look into what life is like for students in Carlo. Um, yeah, that's it. That's my presentation. Um, so I'm going to pass you on now to my colleague from LIT. Um, I want to say Ashley. Since day one, we wanted to make sure that we had a strong relationship with LIT. So for every 10 people that we take on, at least four of them are graduates. And at least two to three of them come to us from LIT. One of the special things about LIT is a lot of times people have multiple disciplines. And that mixture is actually really great. What we've seen in LIT graduates, very open-minded, willing to learn, enthusiastic. For us at Johnson & Johnson Vision Care, skilled graduates are extremely important. We have a very highly technical product. Every year we hire graduates in LIT. You know, when graduates come in the door, what do we look for? We look for work ethic, we look for imagination, we look for people who have initiative and will take initiative, and we look for people that are not afraid to fail. Graduates are very, very important to Northern Trust because we don't know it all. What we want to do, and very important for us, is we want people to think differently from the way we've always thought. And that's what skilled graduates come in and do. Because they're coming through the LIT system where they've seen things differently. And that's exactly what we want. So we want skilled graduates who will come in with a questioning mind. Active learning is, is very important and you can definitely see it in those that come through. You know, they want to know what we're doing while they're learning. It might mean us going down to LIT, LIT students coming up to us, but it's active and it's not just from the book. And that's really, really important to us. Technology changes, the skills that you need change. So having a comprehensive program at LIT with lots of different technology is useful. So being agile, being able to move quickly with the times, to adjust curriculum, being able to do that and move with as quickly as the tech industry moves, of course, that's vital for having folks that are ready to go to work uh, with the relevant skills immediately. Well, all the industries are moving now at a very fast rate. We're only in one part of it, but LIT you have to keep up with it all. And that's where I do see them out, in with the employers, in with the industry, seeing what's the next thing coming up. How can we get students ready for that? As Rachel said, my name is Ashley and I'm from Limerick Institute of Technology. So I'm just going to give you a, a quick um, introduction to Limerick and to Limerick Institute of Technology. Um, as you saw in that video, we're a very practical college. Um, we're highly involved in industry, highly involved in multinationals, as, as Rachel and um, my colleague from DKIT said. Um, so I'm just going to guide you through what LIT is like. So LIT is located in the Midwest of Ireland. Um, it's located very near Shannon Airport, uh, which is one of the international airports in Ireland. 
Um, we're located in Limerick County and we're located in Tipperary County. So we have a few campuses spanning the Midwest. Um, soon we're going to become a technical university. So in the next few years, we'll have um, additional campuses in Athlone and further up the Midwest. So Limerick is the third largest city. Um, it's the commercial capital of the Midwest region. As I mentioned, it's located very close to Shannon International Airport. Because of its proximity to Shannon International Airport, we offer a complimentary bus service to incoming international students um, at the start of each academic year. Uh, it means that as well, you have access to Europe, you have access to America, um, all 15 minutes away from where you'd be living. As my colleagues alluded to, we're a very young city and very young country in general. Uh, nearly 50% of the population in Limerick City is under 35, and then students account for 20% of our population. So it's a very student-focused city. There are three colleges located in the city, um, our college, Limerick Institute of Technology, as well as University of Limerick and Mary Immaculate College. So we've uh, a load of students here um, livening up our city. So Limerick is also within Europe's top 10 cities in attracting investment. Um, as my colleagues alluded to as well, there are lower living costs compared to Dublin city, which is our capital city. Uh, Limerick is up to 50% more affordable than Dublin. Um, so you're getting the uh, excitement of living in a city without the staggering cost of, of living in a capital city. Um, as well as that, we're globally recognized by UNESCO um, for learning excellence. So why LIT? Um, as I mentioned, LIT is a public institute of technology. We're soon to be a technical university in Ireland. Um, this means we are coming together with another institute of technology in Ireland in order to reach a university status and to extend our program offering. Now, this is going to happen in a few years' time. Um, so for now, I'm going to focus on the courses that we currently have on offer. Um, as you saw in the video, we're very um, and we're an active learning campus. Uh, we focus on learning by doing rather than learning through theory. Uh, we're highly involved in industry and throughout their learning, students learn by actively engaging in what they would engage in if they were out working. So they learn skills that they will actually need when they go out and join the workforce in their, um, in their preferred career path. Similar to my colleagues, uh, LIT has very small class sizes. Because of COVID-19, these class sizes will, be, uh, will become even smaller uh, because we'll be facilitating social distancing. So similar to DKIT, there will be a blended approach to learning this upcoming semester. So there'll be a combination of very small class sizes as well as online learning in order to make sure that we can keep one another safe. Um, as mentioned, under active learning, uh, we're very focused on ensuring our graduates are, are ready for the workforce. So with this, most of our programs have built in work placement opportunities. Um, and then if you prefer not to do a work placement, in certain courses, you are able to do an Erasmus study period instead. Um, we have a large network of Erasmus partner universities across Europe. So there's that opportunity to, to work or study in Europe, um, depending on your course. And then again, focusing on our, our active learning and our focus on developing good graduates, our graduates are highly employable. Um, they graduate with skills that are um, practical in their, in their workplace. Um, and they're coming out of their LIT experience ready to go um, straight away. So yeah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have multiple campuses. So our main campus is Moilish. It's located in Limerick City. Um, this is our home of our applied sciences, engineering and technology, as well as our business and humanities faculty. Now, our applied science, engineering and technology faculty is going to be moving to a campus called Kuna. You can see it down there in, in the bottom right. 
um, for the time being. It's located in Moilish as Kuna is being uh, specifically developed for engineering programs and technology programs to um, further increase the, the equipment that we have available for our students to work on and to gain practical skills on. Another campus of ours is Clare Street. It's also located in Limerick City. Clare Street is world renowned uh, for its art and design courses. Its focus is on fine art and design, while our Clamel campus that you'll see there, the hub of creative technology, this is our campus dedicated to digital arts. So while you have fine arts located on Clare Street, um, such as painting, sculpting, and um, graphic design, in Clamel you would have digital arts such as creative media and game art and design. And then finally, we have Thurlis. Thurlis is our state of the arts sports campus. Uh, it's located quite close to um, sporting facilities uh, that are used as part of the Irish um, GAA sports. So it has dedicated sports facilities for our students studying sports strength and, con sports strength and conditioning and um, sports management. So those are our campuses. And I'm going to bring you through a few of our courses and just draw attention to some of them. So as I mentioned, our Faculty of Business and Humanities is located mostly in Moilish. So there are certain courses there that you'll see, Sports Strength and Conditioning and Sports Development and Coaching. They're located in our Thurless campus, which is dedicated to sports. Um, but our Applied Social Sciences, as well as our marketing and business courses are all located in LIT Moilish, our main campus. As I mentioned, our School of Art and Design has many awards to its name. Uh, we have painting, photography, print, sculpture, ceramics, graphic, and um, fashion and textiles. And then some of the other courses mentioned there like game art and design, digital animation production are located on our digital art campus, LIT Clamel. And as mentioned, our applied science courses are still located in our main campus, LIT Moilish, for the time being. Uh, they'll soon be moved to our Kuna campus, which is under development, in order for more up-to-date equipment to be supplied to these courses. Um, while at LIT Moilish, they have uh, a whole designated area filled with um, up-to-date equipment space is becoming an issue. So we're developing another campus in order to give the students even more space and to provide even more space for more equipment so that each and every student has a hands-on approach to what they'll be doing. And just some more of our applied science pros, uh, programs. And finally, we have a few postgraduate programs on offer. So most of them fall in our Business and Humanities faculty, where we have our very popular program, Marketing and Management Strategy, an equally popular program, Digital Marketing. Um, we have a brand new program in Data Analytics. It'll be the first year it's running this year. And then we have higher diplomas in Business Management and Digital Marketing. Our art and design colleagues have a masters in social practice, as well as interdisciplinary design. Oh, what happened there? There we are. Um, and then there are two very popular programs called Master of Science in Quantity Surveying, which is oversubscribed, I believe, even. Uh, we're starting to slow down on our acceptance of applications there because it's incredibly popular. And then our higher diploma in computing with software development, another incredibly popular program. So our fees for EU students range between 3,000 and 5,161 euro. As you can see there, um, undergraduate degree is 3,000 and then it's the postgraduate um, degrees that have some variance. And then for non-EU students, we have a certificate in foundation studies, which we are offering for the first time this year. Uh, that is 7,500. Then our undergraduate uh, degrees are 10,250. Postgraduate higher diploma is 10,750. And then all of our master's degrees are 11,250. All of our taught master's degrees, I apologize, are 11,250. 
Um, for research, we put international students in contact directly with our research office in order for them to collaborate with you on your research topic and to identify um, a route that you need to take, whether it is research master's or research PhD. There are a few scholarships on offer for international students in order to assist with these fee costs. Um, the first is a bursary, which is for um, students who pay all their fees before May 1st. Now, unfortunately, that is not available for the 2020-2021 year, but it is available for subsequent years. Um, the LIT scholarship from the president is €1,000. Um, and it's based on merit, so it is based on your academic achievements so far. So when you are submitting an application to us, it is assessed. And should you have demonstrated strong results in the past, our uh, team may offer you a president scholarship in order to assist with your fees. So the student experience, now this is something that's quite personal to me because I am an LIT alumni. So I have been through this process and I've experienced the LIT student experience myself. So for our international students, for our Erasmus students, our EU students and our Irish students, our biggest society uh, under our student union is the International Society. So I'm very proud of that as an, a staff member and a former student. So our International Society arranges trips around Ireland to see the sites that um, my colleagues would have shown you in their, in their presentations. Um, they arrange surfing, uh, they arrange get-togethers, they arrange pizza nights, and they bring this beautiful sense of community to the campus. Um, as well as the very popular International Society, there are also societies for every sport under the moon, as Rachel alluded to, um, sporting is, is quite big in Ireland, so there would be a hurling club, there would be a golf club, every sport you can imagine, a rugby club as well. Um, then there's also uh, smaller groups for music, for chess, um, any idea under the sun, there's probably a group for it in, in LIT. So the ex student experience at LIT from an LIT alumni is, is something to behold. It is an incredibly loving, wonderful community to be a part of. And I hope that we are able to invite you to, uh, to join our community too. And those are my details just there. Um, if you are on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram, we have our handles just there, as well as two email addresses. So the international at lit.ie email address is for our general queries, as well as my own personal information just down in the bottom left. Thank you so much for listening, and I'm going to hand you back to Rona. Okay, so now it's time to take questions. So we're going to start off with David, if you could read your first question, and then we'll go on to, to Rachel after that. How are you doing, guys? Okay, so the first three questions here, I'll take them as a group. There's a question from Camila Atharva, and a a Aileen, uh, first ones is, do you have law, do you have aerospace engineering, and could you focus on what bioscience focuses on? So I don't believe any of the institutes ha have law, so correct me if I'm wrong, I also don't believe any of the institutes will have aerospace engineering. But we do have, as you've seen in the presentation, lots of engineering programs uh, across our three institutes. But I see Aisling come back in there, you might want to correct me there. No. Like law and accounting, but other than that, nothing to correct. Okay, so yes, yeah, so we, we don't have those. In terms of bioscience, bioscience can focus on a, a multitude of things. So bioscience can be focused, if you work, say, in a hospital, you can be doing the testing for patients that come in and find in their blood, any, any time patients get their bloods tested, bioscience can be focusing on that. You can also be focusing on, again, like I say, the, the cure for coronavirus and working in laboratories and finding uh, cures for different diseases and the production of kind of uh, biomedical uh, kind of and pharmaceutical kind of based processes. So bioscience can focus on a multitude of things. So for the most students that, that I am aware of that kind of graduate from bioscience, they will be working in laboratories, whether for, for private companies, for biocidical firms, 
and or they'll be working in the hospital as well. So that will be kind of those kind of like three cluster ones there before. Just moving down, any other questions for DKIT? So I'm going to pass you on to Rachel now. Maybe there's one from Greg. What are similar universities to DKIT? Maybe you want to answer that one. Or actually, no, I too, I think that's right, DKT focus. What are similar universities to DKT? For example, where else might a student apply for if they're considering DKT? Well, I'm not going to plug anywhere else. So if you're thinking of applying for DKT, just stick and only apply for DKIT. So I'll pass you on then. There's I think there's one there from Estella. So on to you, Rachel. Um, so the first question for me there is how many years is aerospace engineering? So um, in Ireland, we have two kinds of bachelor. There's an ordinary bachelor and an honours bachelor. So we offer um, aerospace engineering as the honours bachelor that takes four years. And then there is a bachelor of engineering in aircraft systems, which is ordinary. The students on two programs are together in year one, together in year two, together in year three and at the end of year three the ordinary degree they graduate and the honors students continue on for a fourth year so the short answer is aerospace engineering is four years full time and um, then the second question was could you please give us some examples of the clubs at carlo okay so this year for example um, of course, all of the sports are represented. So you've got basketball, soccer, rugby, pool. Um, by pool, I mean snooker. Um, so like billiards. Um, then there's hill walking, there's athletics, there's boxing, there's taekwondo, there's yoga, there's dance. And then if you go to the more academic side, you'll have there's an engineering society, there's a language learning society, there's um, women in technology society. So really... <laughs> A huge range. I could be here all day listing them out. But um, if there's something specific that you're interested in, just contact me and I'll let you know. And if the society doesn't exist, when you come, you can start it. That's the wonderful thing about clubs and societies. They're run by students for students. Um, and anybody who wants to start a society gets full support from the Institute to do so. Um, Okay, just go back up a little bit. And then three, could you also develop a bit more on the bioscience? So David addressed that too. Um, I suppose bio meaning, you know, live or alive or, you know, organic. So biosciences, you could be working in the food industry. You could be working in the pharmaceutical industry. You could be working in animal feed production. You know, there's a lot of these types of industries here in Ireland where scientists are needed for quality control and they're needed for, you know, like one of the biggest and most successful spin-off companies here at IT Carlo is um, a Chinese graduate, she did her PhD where she grew bacteria in the lab who when released into soil will clean the soil. And she's doing extremely well with that company now in China. So, you know, bioscience, it's, it's, it's a very wide ranging thing. Uh, but if you have a keen interest in it, please do let me know and I'll be able to share with you the detailed course information. Um, this is available on our website for all undergraduate courses you can find out um, exactly what you will be doing each year, each month of the course. So please do uh, contact me and I'll be able to provide that for you. Uh, Ashling, do you wanna go next? There's a few questions there for you. Uh, yeah, I'll take away. So I see our dorms available on campus at LIT. So LIT don't actually own their own accommodation. Um, we're a bit similar to IT Carlo, where there is private accommodation available. So we work with a private accommodation company that's located five minutes uh, down the road from LIT Moilish. Um, and we work with a private company that is located near our arts campus on Clear Street. And then there are private landlords that um, work with us for students that are going to Clamwell and Turlet. Um The cost of the accommodation in Limerick at the moment I believe it is about 5,000 euro per academic year. Uh, that includes utilities. Um, and it is usually, because there are three, um, three universities located in the one city, it's usually uh, the safest bet to go with the accommodation that's located close to us and that we have links with. 
Um, so we don't have uh, on-campus accommodation, but it is five minutes away. Um, I might address some of the general questions and I'll invite the guys to help me with these. Um, what are the application steps? And I see that there's also a question about um, application for internationals. So uh, there are different application steps, whether you're an EU student or an international student. I think the best thing to do is to actually contact us directly in order to get the application steps, um, because we'd be much better at informing you of the application steps through direct contact with you. Um, I think that might be the same for the guys. What do you think? Go ahead, Rich. Yeah, I would say that probably all of, you know, all of us have a similar process, but there'll be little small differences, which can be explained very easily if you just contact the international office. Yep, it's pretty much the same. So just with your application and your documents, you contact the international office directly, but each of us will follow up with everyone online here and we'll send you more information on that. Just some more information as I believe we might be coming to an end of the webinar quite soon. In terms of TKIT, yes, we do have scholarships. All the institutes have scholarships and the cost of accommodation. Again, it's around 4,000 euros if you're paying for it, but for non-EU students, particularly Latin American students, we offer your accommodation for free. Uh, so just scroll down, uh, and I know there's a lot of questions there that aren't in English, so maybe we'll be able to follow up with you after this and we can get some answers to those questions for you, if Lena and Corolla help us with those. Um, so just scrolling down, in terms of you've all looked at the, the, the polls. There's a couple there that I wouldn't mind answering, if that's okay, go David. For go for it, yep. So there's one here, how about ages? I'm 17, can I study? So absolutely, yes, you can. However, if you are less than 18 when you come to IT Carlo, you will need to um, take the services of a guardianship company. So we have a partner in Dublin who provide this service. It's not a free service, but it's a very reasonable price. Um, and the guardians, the guardians will then make sure that they're available for you 24 seven. Um, they will insist that you stay with a host family. So um, if you're under 18, you need to be prepared for that. You won't be able to live in the student accommodation. You won't be allowed to rent uh, by yourself, you will need to stay with the host family, at least until you turn 18. Um, but yes, can you come? 100%. There are no academic restrictions based on age. The restrictions are really around immigration and just in general safety. Um, in Ireland, the legal age of adulthood is 18 years. So until you reach that, uh, we need to make sure that there's somebody who can take responsibility for you should anything go wrong or anything happen to you. So again, we can explain all that in great detail. And then just the next one I'll hit on as well very quickly. Could you please cover work opportunities during or after studies? So we all spoke quite a lot about your opportunities to stay and work in Ireland after you graduate. But while you're an undergraduate student, you also have the right to work part time. So all international students in Ireland can work for 20 hours a week during the term and 40 hours a week during holidays. And the holiday months are the month of December, June, July, August and September. December to cover the busy time in retail and entertainment for Christmas. And um, so I often say to students, you know, if you're coming and you'd like to work part time, it's realistic to aim to find a job at Christmas time of your first year. When you first arrive, you will need to go through the process of registering your visa. And then if you want to get a part time job, you also need to register for a special number, a social insurance number, which allows you to pay a little bit of tax. Um, so it's not really realistic to think that you'd be organized to be working in September or October, possibly even November. But certainly during the month of December, many retail and entertainment outlets are looking for particularly students who can do this kind of short-term, part-time work. Um, so it's realistic to think that you might be working by the December of year one. And then lots of undergraduate students choose to stay here during the summer, when again, there are lots of opportunities in tourism and in retail. You know, Ireland welcomes over 6 million tourists a year. So there's lots of opportunities for students to find part-time work during the summer. I'll stop there. <laughs> Okay, 
Yeah. Go ahead, Aisling. Uh, I was just going to say, I think some of the questions are a little bit uh, too specific for us to address here. So there is a question about requirements for electronic engineering regarding grades. And I believe there might be another question specifically relating to courses. The best thing to do is to actually contact us about that um, because they're very specific queries that we would need academic assistance on. Um, and I thought I saw another one. Um, minimum English scores. So um, that would depend on the program you're applying to. Again, it'd be best to actually contact us directly um, to talk to us about the program that you're most interested in. Um, at LIT, we mostly use the IELTS system, though this year um, there are some exceptions to this um, due to COVID-19. So systems such as Duolingo are being used as well. Um, I suspect that might be the same for my colleagues. Um, same for you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll take one last question and I'll pass it on to the girls of the, uh, as well. In terms of the question here from Claudia, in terms of application periods, uh, DKIT for, for this year, we're still actually taking applications and we'll take applications up until the end of August. We are starting back on the last week of September for this year, which is two weeks later than normal. We will be allowing international students, uh, EU and non-EU students, to arrive on campus up until the end of October, just maybe because there could be some travel restrictions within your home country. Typically, each year we will take applications up until the end of August, and students will start in the middle of September. So it is still time to apply for now, but if it is for next year, well, we will be in touch with you in due course. So that will be from uh, the end of my answers. And I'm sure I will speak to each of you individually by following up with you with an email after this webinar. Thank you, David. Have a rest, uh, have a great rest of the day. And we continue with more questions answered by Rachel and Ashling. Thank you. Um, I'm just seeing one there for um, any admissions test required for a student applying with a US diploma. Again, a very specific question. Um, we would need to, uh, I know I'm not over the US, so I would need to work with my colleague Breed, who is above um, North America and the US to actually uh, get a specific answer for you there. So if you contact me, um, I'll be able to get that answer for you. And then I think that might be it for the questions. I'm trying to see if there's another one there. Um, touching on actually just from experience, um, Rachel was talking about work experience um, and work uh, while you're in Ireland. Um, students are also able to avail of the Erasmus program um, when they are here. So if you have a work placement on your course and you want to work abroad in the EU, there's also the Erasmus program. So even when you come to Ireland, you have the opportunity to study your work abroad. So um, it's, it's something that makes coming to Ireland even more attractive. Um, outside of that, I think that might be all of our questions. Um, yeah, I'll just briefly just touch on that last question there, Ashley, about the admission tests required for students with a US diploma. So if you're asking about the SAT or anything like that, certainly IT Carla would not require that. Also, if you have been studying in the US as an international student and you've been studying in English, uh, you can get an exemption from having to present an English language certificate. So if you're international and you're in the US, really all that you need is your US high school gra graduation certificate and we'll be able to accommodate you from there. Um, I just saw one other thing above. It was just a quick question. Any essays or recommendation letters? If you're applying for undergrad, um, you are, of course, free to write a statement of interest or a statement of purpose, but it's not 100% required. Um, mostly what we're interested in is what your transcript says about you. Um, and then, you know, for certain programs, there may be a, a small interview. Uh, we may contact you from the international office. Um, but all of those things can be, um, you know, made very clear if you just contact us at um, the international office. Yep, I think we've pretty much covered them all then, have we? We have, yep. Thank you, guys. That's great.
behalf of SRT, we would like to wish everyone a great day ahead. Um, it was a very interesting presentation, and I do believe we answered all the questions. However, of course, if anything was left unanswered, please drop us an email and we'll get back to everyone. Rachel, Ashley, and David, thank you for your time. Uh, we will now enjoy a beautiful video of Ireland where we all hope to see each other soon. And we'll send a button for our upcoming webinars if you're interested in this format of connecting with universities until we can see them in person we would be very happy to host everyone from their homes so everyone again thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day bye-bye thank, thank you bye